All right, as promised, um, digital workflow, um, specifically for speed sketching through this this vehicle thing. Um, we'll flip over and we'll we'll take care of it. In the workflow, I think you get um, a lot of people get obsessed with like getting a clean line work because like you look at cool digital art out there and you get you see a lot of clean line work. What we'll do is we'll just we'll set up this box form real quick and um, and and kind of loose. Um, we know that we're going to do the whole two-sided box thing because we're seeing two sides of this. And what I would want to first do is just set up these kind of width proportions, right? Um, this is going to be very, very narrow here. And then we're going to make this like a little bit bigger um, here. And knowing that within this box, like, our um, actual bulk of the of the truck is going to go here, probably, like that. If we need to erase, I think doing that once or twice is fine. Any more than that, and we're getting into just like a whole realm of work that we don't need to get into. Um, here, we're setting up our vehicle proportions, right? Um, this is probably going to be too long. Um, we're going to cut out the the face of the truck probably about right here. And then we'll probably get about right here. This will be like where the door is going to go, roughly. So if we know where the door is going to go, we know where we're going to get our um, the rest of our truck in here that window the window is real small right it's a tiny little cab and then so here we have the end of our cab so we have our, our markings right we have our engine division we have our cab division and then we go back and probably about right here is going to mark the end of the division for the actual um, bed of the truck um, and then probably what we're going to want to do is just sketch in basically where the wheels are going to go um, and we can bring or at least the wheel wells we can bring in a little bit of work there and then what we probably want to do is estimate roughly where the wheels are going to touch the ground and then bring those over um, and think about maybe where they're going to touch over here just real quick to kind of begin to think through like the dimensionality of it. Okay, so if we want to, we can put some wheels in. At least one side of the wheel. We'll do two sides of the wheel later as we get through this stuff. Since we can actually see through the truck here, we might actually need to um, sketch inside the truck too, just to be sure that we're getting something sort of reasonable. And we can subdivide just a little more if we need to, to find like the bumper and stuff like that. But basically, here's here's the truck. So this is layer one of our digital workflow, and we're um, about four minutes in. So we spent three minutes on that. What we do when we come up to the layer here is we want to bump down the opacity to like 50%, right, or somewhere around 50%. Okay. So then we're going to come up on top of that with layer two. Um, and this is where we're going to do like the bulk of our actual uh, work. We can then, we'll then do a more like refined third layer. So here's where we're going to make like make corrections and things um, and get very more specific with it. Um, so this accidental line is actually going to work out pretty good right here for the um, wheel well here. And it's actually much higher on this side and it's lower on this side. Okay, and the bottom of the wheel well goes out to here, goes there. So here we're looking for like big divisions, right? We're not looking for like tiny details yet. We will get that in the next component. Um, and here you have options of whether to draw front to back or back to front. Um, I, you know, I 
I don't really have a preference for either. I think it can work either way um, that you do it. And here you still have a lot of room to be like pretty loose and messy. Again, this, this side goes up higher. So we can go over that a few times just to be sure that we understand for ourselves when we go into the next layer that we're gonna um, get things going. Might need to just shorten up the front a little bit. So it got a little wide, um, especially if we like zoom out. It seems a little a little wide, so we're gonna shorten this up here, make our first sort of obvious correction, and then here we're kind of doing a two-part plane thing um, to specify our face a little bit because it tilting forward like if we look at the pro if we look at the strike profile the front of the truck's doing something more like that right and then the bumper is coming out here um, this is an over exaggeration right but the idea is there that that plane's coming forward and then we're gonna have the face here somewhere right so we still haven't really erased per se and we're still not going for clean lines yet um, we can find the center um, of this because, well, we have a center subdivision there. That's useful to know um, because when we come down here, we'll be able to like locate the license plate and stuff. We don't actually want to draw in the, the actual numbers of the license plate. That's ridiculous. Um, we might want, you know, it's too detailed, right? Um, then we might want to like more specifically find like the window here and the thickness of the windshield, maybe the curvature. Um, the hood's probably coming down a little bit, so we can start, like, curve the hood down. And then we can find this line here that goes all the way down here and around, right? Um, we can find the back of the truck, the top, curve that, and then curve this down. We're also getting the curvature of the windshield there. Um, then here, wheel well, tire, and then here we're going to give the tire a second side, right? So we go on this axis, you know, not quite flat, give ourselves a second side. That got to be a lot of line weight, but that's okay because we're going to come up and we're going to change that in the next layer. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing here, right? Might want to give a little bit of weight there. Might want to give a little thickness there. Um, we may want to start to show the in the back, um, the back windshield in there, and a little bit of that. We can subdivide the window. Um, we can probably sketch in some of this wheel here. It's largely going to be a flat shape back there. We just have to make sure that we think of it as a two-sided shape. Um, and then here it's probably going to go about there. Sticking close to the reference. Um, that I'm actually going to erase. That was a gross mistake. Um, you know, zooming out. Um, it's not bad, uh, that wheel. Um, that would be probably better. And I probably want to raise that a little bit. Okay, so that's layer two. We are now at 950. Okay, so we spent six minutes on that layer. Layer three is going to be our our third kind of thing. So we're going to go back through our layers, run layer one down to like 20% probably, right? So we can just kind of see it. Layer two, we're going to bump that down to 50% roughly, right? Now layer three is going to be our nice, good line layer. And we're still going to work with, uh, uh, with our hard, opaque pen here. 
Um, and this is where we're going to get our, our kind of details in. Um, what I like about drawing usually is that you see this buildup of line work. Um, what I like about digital drawing is that you can um, not have a huge buildup of line work, which is awesome uh, and is a totally big advantage. I'm going to change that. Um, here we have a soft corner, so we're actually going to use that like, like triple triangle kind of thing where we do this. And that creates a corner in a cube. Um, this one's rounded and coming down. This is rounded here. Um, we're going to use the actual value to um, get a lot of the small details in here. Um, what we're mainly concerned with in a line work layer is getting the major divisions there um, and making anything that needs to be obvious really obvious, right? Like this is an obvious subdivision here that we're going to have to put uh, a value change on. And again, we have another rounded corner going to the grill in the front of the car. And we're coming down. Here we have another obvious change, and we're going to actually do the, the bulk of the obvious change we're going to do with in the value layer. Um, yeah, that's kind of rounding under. Here's the bumper. Bumper's coming around. Goes all the way out. The bumper kind of breaks up the contour on the far end, but not so much on the front end, right? Um, here we got the rounded top, the Chevy, and then it rounds this direction, and then it's kind of sharp in this direction, right? But then the windshield rounds down here, rounds dramatically at the bottom, but not at the top, right? And then it kind of has this little over overhang thing here, so we're going to try to preserve that a little bit. Um, we're not going to get into the, the windshield wipers, probably. Here we have a, a harsh division there that comes up there. So now we're getting into specifics of the line work, right? Where we need the line work. Got a driver in here, right? We can put the driver in or not. It doesn't really matter. The driver is not important to the car. Okay, here we have our two sided tire, right? We've done the best we can on the ellipse. Ellipses are something that can just, they can literally just always be better. So they're like always worth, worth practicing. Um, and that's the frustration of, of drawing, generally speaking, is that. You know, I go back and forth on this on this idea of like perfectionism, right? I think it is not worth accepting mediocrity, right? Like, in the interest of just getting something done, I think long term, right? You you'll be fine. Um, like, okay, so yes, accept the fact that once in a while you're gonna do a bad drawing, but also accept the fact that, you know, that's not an in indicator of your total artistic process, and you're going to edit that out before you release that, right? Or even if you do release it, you'll come back as you do better and better stuff and eliminate those things from your portfolio, right? Like, you're just going to keep getting better and better at all this stuff, and um, the stuff that was once good can get cut out because you've gotten better and now it's no longer good. Um, and I think that's totally cool. I think that's like the neatest thing about drawing is that as you get better, like your standards improve and every once in a while you'll do something that 10 years later you're gonna be like, yeah, that's still good. And 
you know, yeah, okay, maybe that's not super common. But it does happen every once in a while. You do something, you're like, yeah, I still like it. It's still good. Um, but I also think it's very important to just, like, you know, not accept for very long the stuff that you don't like and you don't think is good. Okay, so now I have a relatively clean line bit of line work here. We can add a couple of details to like help out here. Just sketched in. We can add like a door handle if we want. Um, we can add in a side view mirror, but these are like these are non-critical details to me. Like, yes, you can put them in. Whatever, it's it's fine. Um, I think we want to do a little more detail in the tire, just to make, just to keep parallel with the other tire in this front. Okay. So there, if we turn off the old layers, we should see basically a complete car, um, minus some subdivisions, right? So now what we do is we're going to leave that layer um, at 100%. We're going to go ahead and take the layer one and turn it down 10%. To 10%. So now we're at 16. Okay. So um, really, we've been at it for about 15 minutes. We're going to bump this down to maybe 30, uh, layer 2. Layer 3, we're going to keep where it is. Um, let's see here. Now, between layer 2 and layer 3, we're going to add a value layer. And I'll type the name of this value. Okay. We're going to go back to our background tone. And we're going to go to the 50%. And actually, I'm going to type it in this time, 50%. You can estimate it if you want. I'm going to bucket fill my background um, with the 50% tone. Um, bucket fill. OK, so that changes everything, right? So now I'm going to go onto the value layer. And I'm going to give myself a value scale. Um, and I'm going to use my hard ground pressure opacity brush and I'm going to use my mouse actually to give myself the swatches because there's no pressure on a mouse. Um, so here I'm going to go for uh, 90% or actually that's 30, 90. Okay, so this is going to be my, um, sorry, 10% is black. Ugh, okay. I'm going to dot that out and make sure that I'm getting full opacity, like 90% black. Then I'm going to go up to 70%, which is 30. So this is going to be more my shadow core tone. Make sure I have a clear tone, right? Then I'm going to go up to 70. So now I'm on, this is going to act as my half tone, right? My tone is the blank of the paper. And then I'm going to take um, uh, 90, which is going to be white. And that's going to be my my bright white tone. So uh, I can actually do two layers of values. I can do like a black end layer and a main layer. So um, this front of the car is going to remain in tone. The side of the car is going to be in half tone. So what I can do for value layer one is I can take my half tone layer and I can like loosely sketch over everything that's on this side, just like I'm sketching a box, right? And uh, I can, it doesn't have to be like a perfect fill because again, I'm using like the uh, hard ground pressure opacity brush to do this, okay? I can also use the lasso tool, lasso the whole shape at once and then bucket fill it. And that's like a real quick workflow also. But I like the variation that, that's involved with the pressure opacity brush, okay. So what I've done now is I've just kind of very quickly differentiated the plane. And yes, I've gone outside the line. Whatever, that's fine. doesn't matter, right? I'm going for a speed sketch process, not a super detailed sketch, sketch process. But what I've done when I zoom out is I have like made it obvious where the light is in this car, OK? Um, now I can um, block in like bigger areas, right? So on my tone, I've also, I can erase into here, right? And use this to 
get my tone side on some of the planes that don't need to have value, right? Are like dark areas, right? Like on the inside of this cone here, in between here, right? Um, there's gonna be dark in here and through all that. Okay, so just that quick little bit of erasure, right? Uh, allows me to differentiate light and dark. So now, um, I like I I would um, probably just go straight to whatever is like totally dark, right? So here I need to get a little more, get the smaller brush out because um, some of the areas that are super dark are small. Okay, so I'm gonna go inside the wheel well. All right, now this is my 90%, right? I can double check that I'm getting to 90% by um, eye dropping the little area, right? The tires dark and it's in shadow. I can also work on the cast shadow on the ground here, right? Comes out beyond the car. Doing the cast shadow is something not a lot of people like think about when they're doing object drawings, but it's um, like such a powerful tool, right? Because it differentiates very quickly. Okay, so now I've got some cast shadow on the tire itself. Um, and then it's very dark down here, right? I may need to preserve a sense of reflected light down here, bouncing off there, but the tone's probably too dark for that, so I could probably use a little bit of shadow core to do that, get that reflected light in. And then here, this back tire, it's all dark, and I can't really differentiate the sides. I mean, I know there's two sides there. So I can just go ahead and sink it. Same thing with this tire, right? Okay, and now we're at 23 minutes, right? So we've gone past our, our sketch stage and into like the stage where we're starting to finish off stuff. In here, right? We've got some darks um, because we're getting into the shadows um, on the underside of the vehicle. I'm going to ignore the idea of reflection, and so I'm going to draw this windshield as if it doesn't exist first. You can then add reflections back if you want to. Okay. If I want to erase and clean up that line, I can. I also can go in with a background tone and um, mess with it later. Okay, there we go. So I mean, this is pretty good. So now we need our highlight area, right? Because we have some stuff that we need to act, that we were planning on drawing in, like this differentiation right here. We were planning on, uh, or at least I was planning on sketching this in um, this way. because it's just, it's really a value shift. It's not so much like a, a harsh line that we want to get into. I could probably put some highlights in and really differentiate some of these areas. I'm gonna get a highlight here on this corner. Um, I realize there's a cast shadow here that I need to get in. Okay, then I'm going to need some core shadow stuff going on here, kind of to help me differentiate some of this stuff, and to like catch some plane changes that are going on. Um, 
here I'm probably on the grill I'm probably gonna use mostly uh, the shadow core area and the other the other thing that I want to think about is just I am making great use of this tone right as much stuff as I can put into the into the tone area and not touch I want that right because that saves me time and saves me energy right so if I can find a bunch of areas that are going to get into the tone and I can leave as they are I want that to to be like that you know I don't want to mess with it um, I'm getting some reflected light here and it's kind of bright so I may use like a hair of the um, actual half tone to bounce up might get a little reflection there might get deeper reflection here um, I might get some like little cast shadows in places like that okay then I can use just faint highlights up here I can use a bright highlight here and here um, I'm actually going to get like a bright highlight at the top of the car there um, with the cast shadow under it um, same here this is all actually a different color so if I want to I can differentiate with actually the the full white there um, I can use half tone again there to differentiate that bit Um, I can use core in here and on this to kind of help that turning edge a little. I'm actually going to get some cast shadow in here probably, right? Because I'm casting a shadow from the wheel well onto there. I'm getting some core around here, right? Okay. And then in broad strokes, I'm probably going to get like a shadow core down here, right? Because again, I'm turning this edge right here down. And I might even get a little bit on this panel here, right? And a little bit here. And then I'll probably get some cash, like a teeny cast shadow around the blinker. And then I can fuss from here, right? I can then get into my tire and say, well, shadow core up here and down here the tire is actually curved and dimensional and bulging out then I might actually get some cast shadows in here potentially um, this is all dark down here so I could potentially make that just dark um, do a little cast shadow stuff there I could probably get into the details of, of the actual rims and stuff if I wanted to um, I don't necessarily think that that's the way to go always, you know? What matters more is that you get the ellipse to be convincing. Um, and then we got shadow cores up front, so we might need shadow cores in the back to help that tone here. Um, the other thing too is instead of the shadow core, I could probably just, I could probably just erase the tone. That might be better here, especially on the top part. Get to some tone here. I can soften that transition. Into the tone. So that it's not so harsh. here a little bit of tone there then transition transition soft transitions right um, I could probably get a little darker here 
or wider, something like that. So there we go. Um, that's about as far as I want to take it, right? And so we're at 30 minutes, fully done all the way through one angle. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's it, right? So that's your that's your kind of like speed work workflow process, and um, you're actually probably going to be faster at it because you're not having to talk through it. Um, having to talk through it slows it slows down the process um, because, like, I'm explaining and then I'm trying to do it and analyze what I've done, and I'm sure that I've made a mistake somewhere in there that uh, that I would want to change. Um, but I think this is kind of a cool way to work digitally because you just sort of turn the opacity down. You never really erase. Uh, when you get to value, you can use the erasure as a tool, and then um, you can kind of create an effective, a pretty effective drawing um, relatively quickly uh, from there. So um, again, I hope you en enjoyed that, and I hope you enjoy using this this workflow um, because it's quick and powerful, and I think you'll be able to make good use of it.